Okay, I've had some questions on uh, from the study packet for exam three, chapter eight, question two. So let's just march through this together. Consider a market for the for tickets to a football match. That's known in the U.S. as a soccer match. Six supporters of the blue team would like to buy tickets. Their valuation of a ticket, their willingness to pay, are eight seven six five four three, and we've got that diagrammed here. Um, the six supporters of the red team already have tickets for which their reservation prices are, as we call the willingness to accept, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So the first part of this problem asks me to draw the supply and demand curves on a single diagram. So the, the demand curve is already there. Um, I, I'm going to just add the supply curve. So let's label this the demand curve, and um, maybe I can even get my... Um, let me get a skinnier pen so I can I can do this in the small um, space. So notice that we have one person willing to accept two. So that's supposed to be a horizontal line going out to one. So there's the first one. And the second one would be willing to offer a ticket if they could get at least three for it. Third needs at least four. Fourth needs at least five, fifth needs at least six, and then the sixth needs at least seven. All right, so there we go, that's our supply curve. And that seven came out a little bit higher than it should have been. Um, all right, uh, show that four trades take place in equilibrium. So the this supply and demand meet right there, we're going to assume that if it's a tie, if you offer me just what I'm willing to accept, that the trade is, gets made. Um, that's by assumption. Realize that that fourth ticket, you could almost flip a coin whether to trade it or not. Um, the equilibrium price here is 5. I'm trying to draw that with that skinny pen. Um, calculate consumer uh, surplus by adding the surpluses of the four buyers that trade. Well, this first buyer would have paid eight, but only had to pay five, so they get three. The second buyer would have paid seven, but only have to pay five, so they get two dollars of surplus. The third buyer would have paid six, but only had to pay five. And the fourth buyer paid would have paid five and did pay five. So three plus two plus one we conclude that consumer surplus is equal to 6. And then we're asked to do the same for producer surplus. Notice that that first seller would have sold for 2 but got 5, so that's 3 surplus. Second seller would have sold for 3 but got 5, that's 2 um, units of producer surplus. Third one would have sold for 4 but got 5, that's 1 unit of producer surplus. And that last one was willing to sell for 5 and got 5, so 3 plus 2, plus 1, also 6. Producer surplus equals 6. All right. Um, where am I? And total surplus, I'm going to just write it down here. Total surplus is consumer surplus plus producer surplus, which is equal to 12. 6 plus 6 is 12. Um, now we're going to think of a, a counter uh, scenario. And, and we'll suppose that um, individuals bargain with each other and, and uh, don't know about what other prices paid are. So um, we'll, we, let's try to find a way to match um, buyers and sellers so that more than four trades occur, and, and we're just going to follow their hint. We're going to suppose that this person that's willing, is willing to pay um, eight, finds the person that's willing to willing to accept seven. The person that's willing to pay seven finds the person who's willing to accept six, and so on. Six, the person willing to pay six finds the person five, and so on. So all six trades could take place in that scenario. And notice that when we ask how does total surplus compare with equilibrium, notice that each of those trades produced one dollar in total surplus. 8 minus 7 is 1, 7 minus 6 is 1, 6 minus 5. So the total surplus 
in the second case is equal to just 6. And then how does the total surplus in this case compare with um, uh, the, the equilibrium surplus? And notice that 6 is a lot less than 12. So Ts prime is less than Ts. Uh, starting from the allocation of tickets you obtained through bargaining, this is the this this one where in which at least five tickets are owned by blue supporters. Is there a way through further trade to make one of the supporters better off without making anyone worse off? And and the answer is yes, right? Uh, um, the ap after the trade we imagined in in part seven, the um, the the blue team. Uh, Mem the blue team fans have all the tickets. Well, what about if um, let's let's take this red team person that was the 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 ticket was worth seven to them, and they they um, they would like a ticket if they could buy one for less than seven. They could contact the the person. Let's just make it. They could contact the person on the blue who bought it for three from, from, from the red team member that, that only valued it at two. Well, that, that person that values it at seven could and, and sold a ticket could say, hey, could look around and find the person that bought a ticket for just three and say, hey, I'd, I'd give you seven for that and, and notice that the person that values it at three would be, that would be a great deal. So just that one trade would produce um, four units of, of surplus. So um, it, there, there is a, a way through further trade to make one of the supporters better off without making anyone worse off. For if the person received a price three or higher, they're, they're not any worse off. The person who was valued at, at seven paid um, seven or less, they're, not, they're better off. So uh, anyway, or they pay $6.99, they're, they're better off. Um, so, so there we have it.